Oh, what are you doing up here? All right, I want to tell you a little bit about this solar install. So I decided I wanted to put some solar on my house, but I decided to do it a little bit different. And this particular solar setup is back feeding the grid, meaning that I'm putting energy into the electrical grid. These are four panels that are 100 watts a piece, an 18 volt system. It's hooked up to a DC to AC inverter, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then that plugs into an outlet on the house and that outlet then back feeds the grid. So I'm putting 400 watts of power anytime the sun is out back into the grid. It is a net metering system with good power. It's a, a smart meter. So if I'm using less than 400 watts of energy in my house, then it will actually spin the meter backwards. So let's go take a look at the inverter. All right, so we're inside the construction trailer, which this is a working construction trailer for my rental property. So please excuse the mess, but this is how it works when you have a construction trailer that gets you. But what we have here is this DC grid tie inverter. And this is actually a DC input of 10.8 um, volts up to 30 volts DC. So the power coming in from these panels, these are 18 volt panels. They are wired in parallel, meaning that each panel comes directly back here. Red wire, red wire, red wire, black wire, black wire, black wire, in parallel back here, which keeps it at the 18 volts. If you wire panels where you hook on the panels, one positive to a negative, positive to a negative, and you put them in a string, and you come back here with just one red wire and one black wire, that's series, but that's gonna double your voltage every time you add a panel. So. This grid tie inverter would not take 36 volts, so I could not tie two panels together. I had to come back with each panel to this. So just be aware of that. If you use a grid tie inverter, make sure you wire your panels properly. But what you'll notice is I just put these wires all the way back and brought them in through my vent. And I just left the vent so that it can close almost all the way down. But I like to leave my vent open in my construction trailer just to let it ventilate throughout the day but what you'll notice i don't know if it's going to come on now or not when the construction trailer was closed up earlier and it was a little hotter in here anytime this thing got power from the sun it was kicking on a little fan to cool cool this grid tie helicopter breaking all the rules when we grid tie and burn so you just have to be careful to make sure that this thing doesn't get overheated, but it does have a fan included with it. So what happens is the power comes in here, 400 watts, it gets converted from DC to AC, and then this plug comes out, and this is a reverse plug. Sometimes people call this a suicide plug because it's actually got the two wires coming out with power. But the way this DC inverter works is if, if I unplug this, it now goes into a mode that says, hey, I'm not seeing AC current from the grid hitting this, and it turns this off so it is not live. You can't get shocked by this. But as soon as I plug it back in, and now that is running back over to the house, it says, hey, I see power coming from the grid. I know that I can now send my 400 watts or whatever is being um, coming from the sun into the grid. So it makes it as a safety mechanism so that if the power goes out, you can't use this system at all, but it's helping protect the line workers so they don't get electrocuted. So this only works if you have power. This is not intended for an off-grid situation. It's only intended to augment the power that you're using in your house. Let's go take a look at the smart meter. All right, we're sitting here in front of a smart meter. So let's take a look at what this smart meter actually does. You'll see the difference here that this meter is a digital readout and it's got this little thing right here. That's what actually allows them to read it from the street. This is a Duke power meter. But usually this type of meter, the digital readout, is a smart meter, which means that it can tell if the power is coming in to the meter and going to the house or if it's coming from the house and going back to the grid. And right now you'll see that little 
thing on the left hand side that keeps flashing up and it's got an arrow that points to the right that's saying that the power is coming from the grid going to the house the ac system just popped on so you see that actually start moving even quicker and if you look down here at the bottom you'll see that i'm coming from my grid tie inverter over with this cable and i've just plugged into an outlet nothing special this is the the drop cord that was coming from that grid tie inverter and it's just plugged into an outlet and what we're going to show i'm going to go turn some things off inside the house so we can get down to using less than 400 watts of power and we'll see if we can make this meter turn backwards all right we're back outside of the net meter and we have turned off a few things in the house so we are consuming less than 400 watts of power just as a demonstration to show that you can actually make a net meter digital meter run backwards you now see that the line there is moving to the left and you see that arrow is pointing to the left before it was pointing to the right so we are putting power back into the grid all right folks just to wrap this up i want to tell you a little bit about how net metering actually works with duke power in north carolina uh, specifically because different municipalities are different so you need to check with your power company some power companies you buy power at one rate but if you're going to sell it back to the grid you might be selling it at a different rate so you sell it to them at a wholesale rate um, so Duke Power's rate is eight cents per kilowatt hour so if you run a thousand watt appliance for one hour it's going to cost you eight cents eight point seven cents to run that appliance and if you are buying power it's at eight cents and some municipalities you then can sell power at a a um, a wholesale rate and that might be four cents so you sell it at four you buy it at eight that's the reason some people choose to get battery packs and actually store the power and then use the power during peak time at six o'clock in the evening until nine o'clock you use that power out of your battery pack instead of buying it from the grid duke power here you actually get paid the same rate that you buy power. So I buy power at eight cents per kilowatt hour and I can sell power to Duke Power at eight cents per kilowatt hour. So that means you really don't need a battery pack. All you need is an inverter and solar panels and you need to get it into the grid. That's a thousand watt inverter. You can put about 800 watts of power in that legitimately and not hurt that controller. So I could have four more panels, put 800 watts per grid tie inverter into the grid and be able to sell that power to Duke at that eight cents. That's actually a pretty good deal because it, it cuts down on your cost to build this system because you don't have the battery pack. If you have any questions about solar grid tie, put them below. I'll be happy to try to answer those for you. If you have any questions about real estate, please contact me at 704-360-0667. Love to help you and your friends. Rolling out. Nope. Nope. Pop. Hey! What are you doing up here? Alright, I think that's enough. Stop it.